So hello everyone, let's start now. Hello Maria and hello everyone who's attending this session. Hello everyone. Hi. So today um, you all joined us here to, to uh, attend this webinar called um, STEM careers and skills of the future, careers in the software and IT sectors. Uh, I'm Audrey Pop and I will be moderating this session. Um, and my colleague Anastasia under the Scientix account, she will be helping you with any technical difficulties that you may have. So uh, you can write her privately if you experience any issues. Okay, let me start by introducing the two projects that are organizing this webinar. First of all, we have uh, the STEM Alliance. The STEM Alliance is a project that aims to bring industry and education together. It has been built on the success of the Ingenious Initiative and now works with the support of industry and private partners. The project works toward bringing STEM education and STEM careers closer to young Europeans. Um, this is to address the future skills gap that uh, Europe anticipates. And the second project that we have um, is Scientix. Scientix is a project funded under the Horizon 2020 program of the European Union for research and innovation. Scientix aims to promote collaboration among, among STEM teachers, education researchers, policymakers, and other STEM education professionals across Europe. The project was launched in uh, 2009, and now it's in its uh, third phase. If you want to know more about this project, uh, you can see here on this slide um, their website, so you can check this out. And you can also see the handles and tags that you can use to promote this webinar and tell your friends, colleagues, community about, uh, about this webinar. Now let's turn to what we are doing today. Uh, today we will be attending the this STEM careers and skills of the future webinar, which is part of a uh, series of online um, webinars. Um, with these online sessions, we want to give teachers and others involved in STEM education the opportunity to learn more about the careers that are currently on the job market. Um, we want to offer a more practical view on on what is um, what is happening in in what exists on the labor market, um, for example, what are the kind of skills that you need to work in a profession, what are uh, the possible places of employment. Um, you can see what are the daily life, how does the daily life of a professional look like. And today we will focus specifically on, soft, on the software and ICT industry. To help us with that, you can see who is joining us today, Maria Porok. Uh, from CA Technologies. She's calling us from Prague today, from the CA Technologies Technical Center, where she works as a business development advisor. She's originally from an IT background, but I don't want to give away too much because uh, she's here ex to explain about her experience. Now, before I give the word to Maria, I want to first know a little bit more about all of you who are attending this webinar. So you will see a poll appearing on your screen. Yes, now you can see it on your screens. Do you all see it? Ah, great, yes. Answers are coming up already. So here you can uh, tell us about yourself, who you are and how, how what is your uh, interest in STEM education, what is your profession? So I see there are quite a lot of primary school teachers and upper secondary school teachers as well, lower secondary school teachers. Okay, I give you a minute now to all fill in this poll. And until then, we can look at the map behind this. Um, and this, this map shows us where you all registered from. So I see there are a lot of people attending from Turkey, from, if I see it correctly, from Romania and Greece. Is that right? You can give us some feedback in the chat session. 
I see Ukraine is represented here and lots of other countries if you look at the map. There was another picture of the map, but I can't load it at the moment. But uh, I can tell you that there are also people attending from Indonesia and Brazil, which is very exciting, not only from Europe, but all over the world. OK, let's see now the results of the poll. So with us, we have today, most of you are upper secondary school teachers. Welcome, everyone. Um, we also have primary school teachers, lower secondary school teachers. Then we have some pre-primary school teachers, very interesting. Ministry of Education representatives, scientists, company representatives. Wow, great representation of STEM stakeholders here. Thank you, everyone, for filling in the poll. And now, ah, there it is. There you go. There you can see on the map uh, everyone who's attending from across the world. <laughs> OK, so now um, we will start the webinar. And at the end of the session, you will have 15 minutes to, to uh, address your questions to Maria, but you can already um, during the webinar, you can already add your questions in the chat. So we can collect your, all the questions. And in the end, we will ask, it, ask uh, all of the questions from Maria. OK, that is all from my side. So Maria, I will give the floor to you now. Hello, great. Hello, everybody again. Can you hear me well? Everything is working properly? Can you hear me? Yes, Maria, we can hear you. Great. OK. Super. So then let's start if you can hear me. Um, first of all, big thanks for having me here today. I'm really amazed with the number of participants and with the geographies and with the spread of the participants, such a wide audience. I will try to make my presentation as simple as possible in wording, yeah, because, uh, yeah, we might talk about some complicated things, but I will try to uh, frame them in a, uh, as simple wording as possible. And also, I hope a lot that my uh, experience will be valuable to you and to your students, to your pupils. Uh, we are living in a very interesting and a very challenging time. Yeah, everything is uh, changing very, very fast. And we have to adapt very fast and to adjust ourselves. We are learning new skills basically every day. And uh, this is all making the uh, mission of the teachers uh, very very important and uh, you are you are basically doing a great job yeah addressing the new generations upcoming generations and helping them shaping them and uh, growing them to uh, to 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 be future uh, f future um, uh, workers, yeah, in a, in, a, in a positive meaning of the uh, word workers. So um, let me start, let me first of all um, uh, guide you through the uh, agenda. So something we will uh, talk about today, uh, just to give you the understanding. Um, so I will tell you a bit who am I, where I'm coming from, and uh, I will tell, uh, of course, a lot about uh, uh, CE Technologies and my work in the company. Uh, then I will try to uh, give you some insights and some um, uh, highlights of how did I get here. Uh, it was a long journey uh, to, till, till the moment uh, I appeared to work here and to be here. Uh, so I will try to share more details on that and I will try to give some insights of what I'm thinking is important uh, through this journey. And uh, also, as we are heading to the points four and uh, five of my agenda, um, 
I would tell you that um, this presentation today is um, obviously it's quite personal for me. Um, I can share that the, the, such a personal thing that both of my parents are were teaching in the universities, and uh, they've been influenced me a lot on my journey, and I know a bit how is it to teach uh, teach uh, the young people and how how is it interesting and how sometimes it's challenging uh, so that's why it's really a very personal thing for me and I hope it will be valuable for you so I will give you some um, in the end of the presentation some messages what I think is important and I, what I think is valuable uh, for uh, the people who are coming to uh, who are going to work in the um, IT and to take the career in the science, technology and mathematics and in the information technology industry. So let's start. Um, so uh, who am I? Yeah, so my name is Maria, my surname is Borak, as I mentioned, as it was mentioned already many times. And I was born uh, in, uh, in 1979, so I'm 38 years old, uh, in the city called Yekaterinburg, uh, located in Russia. And when I'm describing where the city is located, I'm usually telling, you know, Moscow probably, and most probably you've heard about Siberia. So I'm from the between. <laughs> Uh, I'm just from the middle uh, uh, of uh, of this destination. Um, uh, I could um, I can uh, divide my um, the highlights of my biography on the three uh, major geographical points. Uh, so I uh, was born and I uh, was studying in the school. Uh, spent my school years in Yekaterinburg, and also I was studying and graduating from the university there. And later on, I moved to Moscow, where I spent ten amazing years, and I was uh, I, it was a great experience for me. Uh, and nowadays, uh, I'm living in Prague already um, almost four years. So these are the geographical milestones uh, in my in my career path. Uh, all the movements uh, in my in my life happened just because of the private reasons. Um, I was actually following my family and uh, my heart. Yeah, as it's stated in my presentation, uh, a heart I think is a lot in uh, all what people are doing. So we have to listen to our heart in uh, in in, in uh, moving on, changing the place of living, and also what in in what we are doing in, in our work and in our day everyday life. So um, so I spent ten years in Moscow. And then um, I um, took a break. So uh, um, in Moscow, I spent all these years in also in the IT companies. So the big learning path for me, uh, and basically the establishing my uh, career growth, was my work in uh, the company called Sun Microsystems. It's not existing anymore, unfortunately, as it was acquired by Oracle. Uh, and uh, then I continued in IBM, and after IBM, I was working for a uh, couple of years in the uh, American company called SafeNet, uh, working with the IT security solutions, uh, and I was working for the uh, Russian market and for the CIS countries uh, in the SafeNet. And um, I um, changed my life again completely. Uh, in the end of 2013, uh, when I moved to Prague, and in 2014, I took a break in my career, and uh, I took this break with purpose. Uh, it was my um, wish to make the MBA, and I did the Executive uh, Master of Business Administration program uh, in the uh, amazing place in Slovenia, in the Bled School of Management. Uh, and this was, for me, a point to stop and to think what I achieved, what I accomplished till the current moment, and where do I want to move for forward, and what do I need to move forward. MBA gave me a lot. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great experience, and uh, we will talk a bit more about it uh, as we are following with my presentation. 
Uh, then I also had to take another break. Yeah, so in 2015, I became a mom of the wonderful son. His name is Luca, and he turned yesterday three years old. And this is also opened for me a very new horizons, and uh, it's uh, motivated me to uh, learn some new skills and to uh, basically to master, not to learn the skills, but to master the new skills, which are uh, about uh, prioritizing, which are about time management and work-life balance um, and uh, after I was able to uh, leave my small one I uh, finally found the job of my dream and this uh, this is the job which I'm doing now uh, it's in CA Technologies in Prague office in a wonderful place and um, I will show you uh, the, some pictures uh, later on and but it's really a, a, an amazing place to uh, work and to develop further on the uh, professional path um, let's um, move a bit forward and let's see um, what is CA technology doing because the audience today is uh, so different i will give you uh, a, a small background by the way to prevent the question what uh, is CA stands for. Uh, the company was ori originally called Computer Associates. So CA stays, stands for uh, these uh, two uh, first letters in the computer and associates. Um, and um, uh, what oh, we are basically doing in uh, CA Technologies, uh, this is, it's, it's written on this slide. We are really, eliminating the barriers between uh, the ideas and outcomes. Every business today is becoming digital, going through the various transformation, including the digital transformation. And this is a question for the business um, to survive in a fast changing world. And uh, we in CA, we are helping the company to the to go through the process of this business uh, transformation and digital transformation and to go through this process faster, more effective, uh, with the uh, less risks and with the better outcomes. And in the end of the day, we are bringing the, we're trying to bring the value to these customers uh, with our products, with our technology and with our solutions. Um, give me a second to move further. Yeah, great. Uh, so if we're talking uh, about uh, the company overview, uh, it is here. Yeah, it's uh, too many uh, too many letters here. So it's just some facts uh, about the company. Yeah, we have a, really a great customer base. We are over forty years on this uh, on this market. And uh, we believe uh, that uh, um, we have um, really a great experience in the supporting of the complex IT environment. But what is also interesting and important, 40% uh, of our employees are engineers and software development uh, developers so there is a huge opportunity uh for this uh, for, for for these people and we are working a lot with the young generations a lot of our uh engineers software engineers are very very young people they come they're coming from the universities and we are happy because of this we are we are launching uh, quite a lot of educational pro programs to help them to acquire the necessary skills and to, to, to get the additional skills because they're obviously coming with the, uh, some basement from the universities. But um, the other half of the people um, are non, maybe not so technical. Uh, nevertheless, they are playing uh, also a very key role in, uh, uh, in, the, in the company life and in the, in the business we are doing. Uh, I'm um, in this second uh, uh, percentage. I'm, uh, I'm in the business rather than in the technology. I guess I have some problems with the light uh, here in the room. I'm sorry for that. Um, and uh, if we are talking a bit about uh, 
uh, our portfolio uh, and our uh, the products uh, we are offering to the market, uh, we are framing the concept of our work, um, uh, what we are doing as a software, modern software factory. And this software factory, modern software fac factory is helping the customers in the digital journey. Our product portfolio is supporting the, the whole idea of this uh, modern software factory. And it's agile, we are planning agile, we are uh, uh, offering the project and portfolio management solutions, service management in the DevOps, so-called development and operations. We, uh, we are coming with a continuous delivery products, automation for the companies and for the agile operations. We are covering security area uh, with the API management, application security, uh, identity and access management, privileged access management, payment security, and all these solutions are working in the different complex uh, IT infrastructures, such as Internet of Things, mobile uh, spaces, mainframe, uh, public and uh, private cloud. So this is just to give uh, the uh, overview and the uh, complexity of the business we are working in uh, and to give you some flavor on what the company is doing. But the core of every company is, of course, people. Yeah, and if we are talking about uh, people, uh, uh, who are working in the company. We are really proud of our DNA principles. And this is something which we are starting to be talked about uh, from the first day being in the company. Uh, these principles also motivating us every day to acquire uh, the skills, to uh, be more flexible, to adapt faster, and in the end of the day to work better to bring the most possible value to our customers. Uh, and let's see now where I'm in this, uh, in this uh, uh, modern software factory. So here's the quote from my official job description. But I believe that this is something um, really sounding very unclear and sometimes very complex. And I was thinking how to explain in a more universal way what I'm doing. Uh, the uh, very simple analogy came into my mind. And uh, the apple is not uh, uh, incidentally on this uh, picture. Um, so let's assume, let's imagine you have a garden. Yeah, you're owning the apple garden and you are selling uh, the apples. You are selling them to the closest shops, convenience shops, to the neighbors. You can sell them through maybe the kiosk, which is standing in front of your garden. Uh, and you are doing great. Uh, the business is going and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, growing. And you think how to develop further because you are maybe able to buy another garden or even two gardens and sell much more apples. But how to sell them, whom to sell them? Uh, when you have too much apples, yeah, you're basically in a very competitive situation. Should you go to the other cities, other towns, uh, neighboring towns to sell them? Uh, how should you move forward? Then you start to think that maybe it makes sense to talk to the people, to talk to the companies who are, for example, producing apple jam or making the uh, apple vinegar or just nicely cutting and packing the, your apples uh, and uh, sending them to the supermarkets uh, in the bigger cities. So you start to think who else can, uh, uh, can work with your product and who else can help you to expand the customer reach with your product. And uh, you start partnering with them. You start to find them, uh, recruit them, yeah, uh, agree on the terms and conditions. Uh, you are still continue to sell your core product, apples, but your customers can receive this product in a various forms, yeah, and they are getting much more value uh, from these uh, different forms of the product. This is what my job is about. Uh, my boss during the my job interview told me actually we are not selling apples here and that's true and that's why I put this simple analogy here with the apples but the whole um, whole methodology yeah, and the whole framework is basically the same. 
The company is producing some solutions uh, and the, uh, the company has a technology. And how to reach more customers, how to uh, bring more value to these customers. Obviously, there are companies uh, with which we can partner uh, in order to achieve this and who can help us still to sell our core solution, but add additional value like implementations, services, consultancy, or maybe this company can embed our technology in the solutions they are producing. And uh, all these actions are reaching to uh, a bigger audience of the customers. So my job is about uh, analyzing the market, searching for such kind of partnerships, agreeing on the joint uh, market offerings and solutions we can propose to the market uh, and to uh, our customers, our joint customers. Uh, recruit, enable, teach these partners, maintain the relationships with them. Uh, so this is what I'm doing every day. And uh, this is uh, explaining my uh, job role. And now, Welcome, uh, welcome to the Prague office. And you can see here uh, my working space actually. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if the picture is not too small, but there are some graphs on my computer and there are some also flowers staying next to the window. So this is my uh, real workplace uh, where I'm spending days and sometimes nights, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, when you're entering Prague office, you see this nice logo on the wooden plates. Uh, we love the office here. It's basically very creative and uh, very uh, young style, young generation style. Uh, and uh, it's really comfortable and it's supporting the, uh, the working conditions. Um, so the, the whole work in CA is about um flexibility and flexibility in everything yeah it's not only the flexibility in the working hours yeah but it's uh, again it's the flexibility of the adjusting to the uh, various situations um it's a lot about the creativity and the thinking process a constantly thinking about certain projects and how to address them in the best way so uh it's really the um, the brain's consumption is really critical uh, in, in, in the job I'm doing. Uh, then it's all about the right planning and the right execution. And it's again and again. Whenever you, I'm starting with a new partners, I again, I have to think how, what can be the solutions, what can be the right path to approach the customers, what can be the right value proposition. Uh, and Every time I'm starting basically with every new partner, I'm starting basically from the scratch. It's a lot about uh, meeting the people, new people, and this is uh, the part of the job which I love a lot. It's about, uh, of course, uh, facing some challenges and uh, thinking how to overcome these challenges. But this is also my favorite part because when you're see, seeing the results, uh, uh, when you're facing the challenge, you're overcoming them and you see the result, this is the biggest uh, satisfaction in my job, uh, job uh, actually. Um, it's also about a lot of traveling and also it's about having fun in the end of the day because if you don't like what you are doing, then you are not on the right place. My typical working day can be very different. Uh, it can be a, a really a day in the office sitting, um, uh, looking through some uh, data and some information, compiling a lot of Excel spreadsheets. And here I'm very happy that I have uh, mathematics in, in my background uh, and I can do it. Uh, I can do this uh, formulas in the, in the Excel. Um, and sometimes it's a completely different uh, various partner and customer events uh, or meetings, um, account planning meetings, uh, um, business planning meetings. Uh, and it's really the weeks are flying very, very fast. And when you are looking, oh, I'm in the end of the year, I'm in the end of the quarter, in the end of the half a year. It's really very, very going very, very fast. And um, I'm always thinking how to stop this moment because uh, it's really the enjoyable, uh, very enjoyable time for, for me. Uh, and 
but let's uh, mm, see how mm, did I get uh, uh, to see yeah the whole journey uh, from uh, the moment when I was born and uh, to the current place uh, was quite quite actually long it took me mm, more than uh, 20 years uh, to be where am I and uh, let's uh, start tackling the specific skills I consider uh, the most important uh, to be where am I so as mentioned uh, I was born in 1979 and I spent 10 years uh, in the school in the city of Yekaterinburg the major focus of the school was languages and uh, I started learning English my specialization was English from the very first class uh, of the school and I think that at this moment of time this was my favorite subject uh, and I was thinking uh, at my uh, very first years at school that it can be my further career path um, but uh, when we started to uh, talk about uh, more serious subjects uh, and when I start to, to uh, grow uh, grow up uh, of course uh, just the languages uh, they were been coming together with the interest in mathematics spe specifically in geometry and also I like I liked a lot literature and I was doing a lot of sports I have uh, some um, professional grades in sports as well and this created I also I uh, was attending the musical school but this is not about the stem skills of course this is more about that I was constantly very very busy and I think it influenced a lot uh, because it wasn't interesting for me just to uh, sit and to relax uh, I was always doing something studying something preparing something and I think this is uh, uh, one of the things which is uh, th th which taught me and motivated me still to uh to 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 learn something new basically every day uh, after graduating from school i um started uh five years and i did my uh diploma in the university of mining and geology um the choice of the university uh was um quite interesting for me i did not have at the moment of the graduation of school of the school i did not have uh the passion about uh doing some particular things so it was more um more um, an influence maybe of the current situation in the country uh a current situation with the job market uh so i've chosen uh the uh euro state mining uh, uh university uh because there was a strong uh, faculty of the economy and management and because uh, the mining and geology is the uh, uh, one of the core uh, industries in the region when, uh, where I am from and of course uh, the core skills I got there they're more about the theoretical skills yeah it's uh, uh, economics and management uh, it's marketing it's um, uh, obviously mathematics uh, it's not a pure technical education I don't have a, a, a very technical background as I mentioned but it's a combination of business and technology and the biggest influence on my future career further career path uh, uh came from the basically booming of the internet the internet appeared uh, in around 96 90, 1996 1997 in the universities uh it, it it started to be available and the technology was booming and at this, at this moment i realized that this is something which i'm really interested to work the, uh, in and I started uh, my career as uh, uh, I was um, already uh, still in the university. I started my uh, my career in the regional system integrator, basically from the receptionist, uh, because I wanted to understand how this business is uh, work uh, is working. Um, 
I understood at this moment already uh, because I started to uh, um, approach also some um, uh, web design and site uh, uh, websites creation and online shops creation that I will not be able uh, to program and code maybe because I don't have really this this kind of skills. But again, the combination of business and technology was really very, very interesting for me. And I was trying to find my path uh, there. Uh, during all the years of my uh, past career and my current career, uh, obviously, um, I was acquiring uh, a lot of skills. And I'm repeating this uh, maybe too many times, but still, um, you are as soon as you are working you understand that you are missing uh, uh some knowledge and um you are you are doing all your best to find where your gaps are and to uh where you can where you can uh, get this knowledge uh, the self-education is very important uh this is one thing and uh, again i think that the motivation for the self-education was developed by my childhood when I did not have a, a, a too much free time, uh, constantly learning or going on for sports or playing the piano. Um, but then uh, as I was growing, as I was developing uh, through my career, I uh, realized the necessity in uh, so-called soft skills training uh, which is including but not limited by uh, the things are as, as presentation skills, communication skills, negotiation skills, conflict solving um, skills. Um, and this is this is obviously coming with the experience. but uh, you can also train these skills and develop these skills. And it's critical to maybe to understand, uh, and to feel when the gap of the skills is coming to address it properly. Uh, also, I was doing, of course, a lot of uh, uh, specific professional trainings, uh, such, sale, such as sales trainings, project management trainings, um, and also uh, very, it's, it's, it's really, it was a very big number of the additional, uh, additional professional trainings r relative, uh, related to the uh, products uh, or, or the com my companies were selling and related to the technology. Of course, these are the trainings which are not deeply technical, but it's allowing you usually to formulate properly the business message, the value message we are addressing to uh, our customers. And then, as mentioned, uh, the big influence for my um, current stage in the career was my studies in the IDC uh, Bled School of Management, where I was doing my uh, executive MBA program. So um, uh, it was more about uh, structuring and framing the knowledge which I already had. Uh, and it was it was not teaching you the subjects. It was teaching you to frame the knowledge, to structure the knowledge, to put it into certain concepts which are helping you in your everyday work. Yeah, the things as a strategic planning, financial management, as a marketing, as a uh, sales management. All these things are easy solving and easy, more easy addressable during the everyday work if you have this framework and concept uh, understanding. So I think this was a very, very valuable uh, time spending and uh, it's really boosted my uh, further professional development. And um, if we're summarizing what is critical, and I think I've I named or I've I, I mentioned uh, all of the of the skills uh, which which are necessary in the doing the job which I am doing currently. Of course, it's a, it's uh, all the general subjects which are taught being taught in school, yeah, including mathematics, physics, languages. Uh, they are expanding the the horizons. They are. Uh, making you to understand the nature of things. Uh, but maybe they are sometimes disconnected with the reality. So 
when I'm talking about a general subject and uh, thinking about my school years, I would uh, uh, I would think that it would be much interest much more interesting for me if my teachers would be able to give me the connection of the uh, subject with the reality, mathematics uh, mathematics with the real life, yeah, physics with the real life, because it's not uh, about learning the formulas, yeah. In the end of the day, you are applying it every day in your private life, in your business life, and it's very interesting. Uh, if this connection, if you can feel these connections with the real life already from the very, very early ages. We're talking about the special uh, science uh, and if we're talking about the uh, career in the more technical uh, uh, path yeah, of the IT industry, then of course it's about the programming languages and the computer skills and uh, uh, other special disciplines. But for me, it's uh, the basics and, the, and the, also the advanced level of the management and economics. It's a financial management, it's a strategic planning, um, and also the whole scope of the soft skills. They are very critical. We are using them every day and this is something which is really need to be developed from the very early stages uh, because as soon as you are going you have less time you have less wish to learn this but you are missing it uh, these skills so this is uh, this is my uh, summary which I would like to propose you um, uh, for your consideration when we're talking about the uh, skills which are required in the uh, career in the informational technology. And um, very last but not least, maybe, um, I called my presentation Listen to your heart, heart, yeah, and I told it's very personal for me, uh, and I mm, told that um, I believe that we had we are mm, making a lot of things based on what our heart is telling us. So um, my message for the students and my thoughts for the students would be that we always, and to your students, maybe to pass to your students, would be that uh, you also always need to um, think and to take the decisions but st starting this thinking process you need to start with questioning why why i'm doing this why i'm here why is it interesting it's challenging you it's teaching you uh, to position uh, uh, yourself very, in a very proper manner and i think this is very very important because it's helping to solve a lot of small and bigger issues without uh, creating a big disaster. Um, as mentioned several times during the presentation, uh, we are living in a very fast changing world. And I would suggest that the students should not be afraid of these changes. They should take the decisions, they should follow the decisions, and they should try to adapt as fast as possible. And then the whole the life and the career path would be much more uh, easier for them. Uh, I'm telling this from my really from my uh, life experience. Um, sometimes I feel this lack of the skills of fast adapting. The technology is changing very fast. My products uh, are changing very fast, and it takes me really a lot of time to accept these changes. So I would encourage the young generations to do it much faster. And of course. Uh, I would tell the students that they should not be afraid to ask the questions because if we are asking the proper questions, yeah, uh, it helps us to solve the problems. And this is some skills which I'm using every day in my job. Uh, this is not taught in the university or in the school, but this is something which you can create and uh, motivate yourself to, to develop uh, as your personal uh, quality. And last, uh, uh, some proposals and some considerations uh, uh, for our, our today's audience, for the teachers. I would advise and I would really encourage you, um, because when I was thinking uh, about uh, myself, yeah, and about 
uh, the future kids, about my son, who will be the student quite uh, soon already, as the time is flying fast. Uh, what I would encourage uh, his teachers, yeah, to to tell him, and how I would encourage uh, the uh, the um, situation where he would learn the best way. Um, I would advise to provoke the constant thinking and decision making process in the in the in the children, starting from the very very early stages. We are making the decisions every day. Uh, I'm making the decisions every day in my uh, work. And uh, as soon as we are able to take the responsibility for these decisions and take them fast, it's helping a lot. Um, making the mistakes is not bad. It's a learning process. And uh, we don't need to, uh, to tell the, the children, the, the, the students, what to do. But we can help them and guide them through uh, taking the right uh, right uh, uh, learning path from uh, doing the mistakes. And also, uh, the last but not least, develop, help them to develop the wish to study and to acquire the new skills every day. Because as I mentioned many times during my presentation, uh, it's really critical. It's helping to be more uh, prepared to the changes uh, and it's helped to uh, be faster, more efficient in uh, uh, the future job of the our, uh, students. And uh, with that said, I would like to say you thank you. And I'm open to the questions. Thank you, Maria. That was a very, very insightful presentation. Let me start my camera as well again. Okay, hello again. Thank you very much for this presentation. We had a lot of questions throughout the, the whole presentation. Let me start with one of them from Anna. Uh, she asked, if your son would be 18 years old, to whom would you advise to go uh, about um, what to study and uh, where to go in, in, in a professional life? I would say I would not advise him uh, any specific uh, choices. I would ask him questions. Uh, what does he think if we are choosing this path? What does he think? What will it bring for him? If we are choosing the other path, uh, what does he think it bring for him? As mentioned, I would challenge him. <laughs> I would ask him questions and I would try to guide him to take his own decision. Okay, thank you. Um... So um, there was a question about, it's a quite personal uh, question, I think. Do you think that you are a successful person? It's, it's a very interesting question. What is the definition of success? Exactly. For sure, for sure I think uh, that um, I have some accomplishments. Uh, which can uh, which can make me to consider myself as a successful person, but um, I think there is far too much still to achieve and to accomplish. <laughs> nice, that that's a good answer. <laughs> okay, um, so what would you rate um, were the most important circumstances in your professional development? How would you? Um, yeah, maybe you can list us the, the top circumstances that had you develop throughout your professional development. I'm not sure that I got the question uh, in the right form. What, what, is, what is addressed by circumstances? Maybe I need some more clarification here. Um, I think we can just interpret it because uh, the, the person who asked it... Um, I can take it. I can take it offline if if it's if it's necessary, so we can address it later on. Yeah, that's maybe okay. to get well, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, okay, a very interesting question. How would you make the the study of maths and physics more attractive? Or perhaps do you have any messages you would say about these subjects to the youngsters? This is a great question. Um. <clears throat> I would more link it to the to the you know to the real world again. I would more 
showing the situations, yeah, if you're writing some formulas, they are very far from the real life, yeah. But if you're showing the students how it can be, and I, I think I, I told it during the presentation, how it can be used in the life, uh, when will you need it? This will encourage uh, the more interest. And, um, and of course, um, I was lucky. My teachers of the mathematics, they were really genius. They've been uh, loving their subject as well. Uh, and this is always visible. And I think the kids, uh, the young kids, are always admired with the passion of their teachers. Yeah, that's, that's true. Passion is, uh, how do you say that? It's sticky. It goes from one person to the other. <laughs> so if you see that from your teacher, it's, then. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. poison. <laughs> yeah, it's poison. <laughs> kind of. One. Yes. Um, there's a question. It's, it's about innovation. What subject would you uh, introduce to your modern school program? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a very difficult question. Um, I need. I really need to. Th I really need to think about it. <laughs> can, can we really? Can we put a list? I will be more than happy to uh, to yeah, address it. Course. Yeah, and then we can provide all the answers yeah. to, to. Absolutely. Answer. Yeah, absolutely. Later on the website. Yeah, but, yes, of course. Yeah, but I just don't want to um, answer out of, you know, out of blue. Yes, of course. And this is a very specific question as well. So I can imagine you have to think about it. Um, Sema as the question. Um, you experienced a lot of things, sports, piano, a lot of different things. Um, then you found, found your uh, life's job. Um, were you ever afraid of failing? Failing is a part of the every profession, and that's why I'm telling. Mm, I think that to make the mistakes and to fail is extremely critical. If you are hiring a person to the job and it's, he tells you that he never failed, don't hire this person, please, because most probably it's either the liar, either it's a mm, bad self-perception. Um, failure is a is a natural part. Um, as you could notice, I'm maybe far over emotional person and I'm taking it really very personal. But the most important point is to learn from failures. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, can be included in the curriculum as well and in, in the pedagogy at school, I think. Absolutely, if we can, if we can help um, and if we can help to guide yeah, the children how to cope with that, with the yeah. failures. Um, I think it would be an amazing thing. Yes. There is a question from Svetlana. She asks, um, do you support traditional school or learning with using modern smart devices in primary school? So it's specifically to primary school. Well, I'm quite, um, I wouldn't say already old, I'm quite mature person and I obviously uh, I'm for the classical methods of the education. Uh, uh, nevertheless, um, I think we always have to bear in mind that we are not the same as our parents and our kids, uh, our students are not the same as we are. So every generation is uh, different, they're changing and they're living in the di digital era. So um, in this uh, extent, I would start including it, but still uh, taking the bigger path for the classical education. Hmm. Interesting. Um, there is a question that that uh, is more about, uh, again, a, a, more, a more personal question. Did you have uh, any inspirational figures, role models in your life that inspire Absolutely. personal development? And Absolutely. Yes. Can you tell us a it's, bit about that? It's my father. My father was a university uh, university teacher, and um, he, I think he he did a lot. And uh, uh, the things I'm uh, I'm uh, talking, uh, I was talking today. Yeah, and uh, my last messages to the students and for the to the teachers. I think this is coming from my father. Mm. 
Was there any anyone in your high school that inspired you? Um, <clears throat> or anything in your high school education? Uh, absolutely. There, uh, in um, it was already in the university and on my um, uh, second education on the MBA education. Mm -hmm. um, there was two professors uh, who 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 really amazed me and who were inspiring me and first of all they've been inspiring my thinking process yeah uh, and also um, the inspiration uh, for me is uh, uh, Simon Sinek yeah whose quote I used to start with why <laughs> yeah so um, this is this is the um, the guy who is uh, writing a very a lot of things which are motivating your thinking process. So I would uh, advise everybody to listen to his TED talk talks and uh, get some inspiration there as well. well. That's a good idea for everyone uh, who is in the chat now. You can uh, you can listen to this TED talk and and more publications from him. Absolutely, yeah, they are available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see if there is one more question. There is a question from Ebru. He asks, or she asks, I'm not sure. Um, should students be directed to voc vocational education at an early age? Or should, uh, should only basic skills be gained? So I think- At the early? Yes. Go ahead. At the early age? <sighs> well i think it depends on the on the child yeah and i think the teachers together the, with the parents could see if it's applicable for the this particular child or not okay yeah fair answer <laughs> so and um, that will be all i think for now there were lots of lots of questions i will collect all of them and we will publish it on the with answers on the stem alliance website and for now, I Absolutely. want to thank you again for your presentation and for being here with us today. And for everyone who was here, um, there is a feedback form that you can fill out. Um, my colleague Anastasia, Anastasia, Anastasia has been uh, posting it a couple of times in the chat. So if you have any feedback for us on how to improve for future webinars, um, please uh, fill out this feedback form. And if you would like to receive a certificate for attending this webinar, you can write to um, to stemalliance at eun.org and you can tell us your first name, last name, school name, um, and email address. Um, and then we will, with that information, we will be able to provide you with a certificate as well. Okay, thank you everyone for being here and thank you Maria very much for this very interesting presentation. Hope to see you all. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.